Some games are so bad right from the start that there is no way in hell that I'll keep on playing them. And Star Trek Generations for the Game Boy is definitely one of those games. The first level of this piece of shit is so dull and so poorly made that it stopped me cold. It just really is that awful. So anyway, let's get into it. Levels from Hell, Star Trek Generations for the Game Boy, the first level. Normally, I'd save the music for the end of a review, but I want to make a point. Listen to the opening theme and ask yourself, would I really want to play the game after hearing this? People often say, Well, you can't judge a book by its cover. Bullshit! Of course you can! I listened to this awful butchering of the elegant Star Trek theme for a few seconds, and I knew that this game was doomed. And gee, what do you know? I was right. So much for not judging a book by its cover. Anyway, you start out the first level, which has almost nothing to do with the movie. You're fighting two Tholian ships. Why? Search me. They could have just had you rescuing the Elorians from the Nexus, but why follow the movie's plot, right? Now my problems with this level are numerous. You start out on the bridge of the Enterprise B. The graphics don't look all that great, but I'm willing to cut them some slack because it's the Game Boy. However, even so, there are still problems with this level's visual design. For example, it is impossible to distinguish the two enemy ships while they're on the view screen. This might not seem like much at first, but trust me, it becomes a big problem later. I don't see why they couldn't have made the ships look a little different from each other. Furthermore, from a distance, it's impossible to tell a planet from a ship. Why the fuck couldn't they have just omitted the planet and have the battle take place in outer space? It's not like you have to land on the planet after the battle or anything. It's just a waste of graphics. Another problem are these screen indicators. They tell you how much shield and phaser power you have left, which is fine. What they don't tell you, though, is how much shield power the enemy ships have left. The only way you can tell is to hit the select button and have a tactical screen pop up. But I'll deal with that more later on. In any case, with the main view screen, you can't tell one enemy ship from another, and you can't tell how much damage each one has taken. And this makes the level even more confusing. Using the phasers is yet another issue. If you hold down on the fire button, you'll use up the phaser energy really quickly. So you'll have to wait and take little pot shots instead of being able to blast the goddamn ships. And once the phaser energy is depleted, you have to wait for fucking ever for it to regenerate. Which means you have to take little pot shots again. Perhaps the worst thing of all about this view screen, though, is the lack of a targeting reticle. The most basic element in any space combat shooter, AND THEY COULDN'T PUT IT IN THERE! They had phaser lock capability in the Star Trek TV series and movies. So why couldn't they have put that in this fucking level? Did the game designers get their brains replaced with Alpo dog food? Without a phaser lock or some kind of targeting reticle, it is nearly impossible to hit anything. You just have to guess, like Sulu in Star Trek 2. Not to mention that the hit detection is piss poor. Like here. I nailed the goddamn ship, but it doesn't register! These problems alone would be enough to sink the game. But it gets worse! Instead of giving you a radar on the main screen, you have to hit the SELECT button to bring it up! And the game doesn't pause for this either. So while you're in this mode, you're vulnerable to attacks and you can't fight back. Whose bright fucking idea was this?! No phaser lock, no enemy shield meters, no on-screen radar... At this rate, they may as well have just put a brick wall in front of the view screen! After I first played this game, I learned that the enemy ships have regenerating shields like you do. And here's where the sameness of the enemy ships and the lack of shield meters for them really comes into play. If you don't consistently attack one of the ships, their shields will regenerate. Which means that you won't be accomplishing jack shit! And the only way to tell one another is to go back and forth between the radar screen. 
Even then, it's still hard to track them because they'll fly around you and past you and change direction randomly. So basically, you have to follow around one of the ships and keep taking pot shots at it with your phasers. They could have solved this problem so easily by just having a phaser lock with an icon that tells you which ship you're chasing. So of course they don't do that! Frankly, this is one of the worst outer space combat scenarios I've ever seen in any game! The unreleased Star Trek V game for the NES had a better space battle design than this. And that game was fucking terrible! But at least in that level, there was only one enemy ship to track and you could follow it easily. Here, though, you could be floating in space for fucking ever trying to find these ships! Hyperbole aside, this brings me to the biggest problem with this level. It is so boring! There are some stretches where you literally fly around for minutes just trying to find the enemies! Worse shit, you can just fly around doing nothing and not be killed! Here, I'll show you. <laughs> you just fly through space, take hits, regenerate your shields, and not die. How is this exciting? There's no time limit to hurry things along or a lack of regenerating shields. Never mind a brick wall in front of the view screen, they should have just omitted the enemies altogether! There is one consolation in this so-called battle, though. Once you finally manage to destroy one of the ships, it is easier to hunt the other one down. But you still have to chase it through outer space and take pot shots at it with your phasers. When you destroy the second ship, the level is finally over. But by then, it's too late. The damage is done. After chasing these ships for who knows how long, I had no intention of playing another level. So in conclusion, there are other Star Trek games with better space battles. Go play them instead, and don't even bother with this one. This is Film and Stuff signing off. Thanks for watching. Did the game designers get their brains replaced with Alpo dog food?